let's take this time now to talk about the sweet spot theory as it applies to the AR-15. And before I go there with the AR-15, let's talk about how I came up with this theory, uh, I guess, about 10 years ago uh, with competition pistol shooting and now tactical or self-defense pistol shooting. Uh, sweet spot theory, in my mind, uh, was basically where shooters, competition shooters in particular, uh, I would observe them, and they had a skill of shooting so fast and so accurately. I said, "Well, how the heck are they doing that? You know, they, they really do. They have time to really see the sight that fast. And, and sure, they do. Your mind thinks a lot faster than than most people assume. But one of the things that they were doing repetitively, over and over again, was bringing the front sight of the pistol up to their line of sight. So if I'm looking downrange at a target, and I see the target, I know that my eyesight is going in a straight line to the target I want to hit. Now, I also want to take this one step further. I want to say not just the target, but a precise spot on the target that I want to hit. I want to be very exact with my eyesight. Okay, so now that I've got that laser beam coming out of my eyes directly to the target I want to hit, in turn, what I'm going to do now is bring the pistol sights up to my line of sight. Okay, and I'm going to intersect these two sights with my laser beam that goes to the target. And I'm going to do that repetitiously over and over again. So each and every time I draw and come up, I'm going to have the same exact sight picture. I'm going to see those sights in my line of sight. Draw, boom, there it is. Again, draw, boom. Same spot, okay? By keeping my head fixed, my eyes directly on the target I want to hit, and by bringing the sights into my line of sight, I can be extremely fast and extremely accurate. Now, let's apply that same principle to the AR-15. Again, we've got front sight, rear sight. We understand the relationship we're looking for with those two items. Now the key is how can I bring this sight picture, this alignment of these two sights, into my line of sight and do it rapidly over and over and over again and consistently and so that each and every time I bring the gun up, I will be accurate. Well, first and foremost, two things to kind of keep in mind. One, you have to keep your head erect. All right, It is very slow for you to shoulder the rifle, drop your head, and look for the sights. Okay, do you see that? Okay, I'm going to point over this way, bring the rifle up, drop your head, and look your sights. Okay, because now two things are entering. I'm moving two things. I'm moving the rifle, and I'm moving my head. Okay, now the head movement is not going to be consistent from time to time, because that will depend on where I place the rifle. If I place the rifle low, I'm going to drop my head farther. If I place the rifle high, I have to drop it a little less. So my theory that goes with the sweet spot with the AR-15 is that you want to keep the, your head, your, your eyesight, as still, as fixed as possible. So you identify your target. There's your target. Now, I work with the gun shouldered high, okay? Because, again, this is very lightweight rifle, very little recoil. Not going to hurt you not to have the whole butt anchored into your shoulder, especially for this kind of drill. And again, I don't even put it onto my shoulder. I try to put it closer to the center line of my body. All right, looking right here. Okay, I'm not trying to have it over here as much as I'm putting it right here, center line with my chin. Okay, here is what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to bring the front and rear sight up into my line of sight. Now you can see I've turtled my neck a little bit. Okay, I'm not all the way erect, okay, because I can't get the sights into my line of sight. So by turtling my neck, by coming down a little bit, okay, now all I'm looking to do get that butt right on my chin basically and just raise it straight up. Okay? And I'm trying to bring this rear aperture into my eyeball. Let me take my glasses off if I can. <sighs> okay. Let's observe what's going on here, okay? I'm going to go ahead and look at the barrel or look at the uh, muzzle of the camera right down. I can zoom in a little bit closer. You can see what I'm trying to do now is bring my 
line of sight. Okay, bring the line of sight and the sights themselves. Okay, I'm not moving my head at all. My head is still. There it is. I'm looking to bring this rear aperture up to my laser beam that's coming out of my eye. If you can understand what I'm trying to get to there. My eyesight that I'm looking at exactly is coming directly up. Okay, and now if Scott, if Scott can zoom in, you'll see my eye down through the rear sight. Okay, head doesn't move. Again. Okay, this exercise is extremely effective in close quarter combat shooting. All right, when you are in close quarter combat shooting, you don't have the luxury to take a precise sight picture, or should I say, a long studied sight picture. You're looking, you're wobbling, and you're squeezing, and then bang. No time to do that, because people are shooting back at you, or you wouldn't be shooting them. You've got to be quick, you've got to be fast, you've got to be accurate, you've got to be consistent. So, what I'm trying to get at here is to develop a consistency in the way you mount the rifle, not only on your shoulder, but also the sights to your line of sight. Hence, the sweet spot theory. There's my target, there's my sights, okay? I know at this distance, I'm gonna shoot a little bit low, so I'm gonna aim at the top of the target. And there we go, top of the target, again. At these distances, here's my sights, here's my shots, this is what we're hitting. Again, very comfortable for self-defense shooting. Let's go ahead and do a couple more drills. Working at just six, ten yards, say six yards right here. Okay, there's my target. Again, now over the shoulder. Looking at just keeping my head still and raising, okay? That's what I'm trying to do. That's all I want to do. You can see a lot of accurate shots for self-defense. Okay, we've got a five inch radius here, and that's what we're looking for for self-defense accuracy. Okay, we're looking to hit a five inch radius here in the chest, here in the head. And that's the shots that we can do, and you can do them relatively fast. Now let's talk about one other thing, if we can. How do I hold the rifle with not only this hand, but also with this hand. Obviously, I've got a standard pistol grip here. And I've got this other hand. I want to show you what I'm doing here. I'm pointing my finger. Okay? It's real important, I feel, for the pointability of the weapon. I could have it like so, but I don't really feel that it's quite the same every time. By pointing, I have an index. I'm looking for the flat spot of the guard there, the uh, heat shield there, and I want to point my finger right down the muzzle. So when I turn and shoot, I am basically pointing my finger every time. Pointing my finger at the target. That's what I'm looking to do. Okay, now one other thing I want to talk about here in this segment, and that is basically the uh, ability to manipulate the safety on and off. Okay, it's very, very important. Obviously, here's the safety. And one of the things that uh, I feel is extremely important is for you to be comfortable with taking the safety off, off, but also putting it back on. All right. I think it's really important that you learn how to automatically put that safety back on without altering your